Good afternoon, everyone. It's Tuesday, April 30th, 2019 at 1 o'clock Eastern, and it's time for Advancement Live. I'm your host, Kerry Gotham. On today's Brad live broadcast, we're going to learn more about New York's Advancement Conference, SUNY Quad. And I'll actually be wearing two hats today. In my normal role, I serve as the Director of Alumni Engagement at the College at Brockport, but I also serve as the SUNY Quad President, and I'll be our host here this afternoon. So let's get right into it. The annual SUNY, Co SUNY Quad Conference is just around the corner from June 12th through the 14th in beautiful Saratoga Springs, New York. The conference is open to any professionals, public or private, who are looking for a low cost, high value professional development opportunity to learn and share best practices, build their professional networks, and gain the inside track as they return to campus, recharged, refocused, and ready to go. In this session, we're gonna provide a preview of this year's conference, discuss critical issues that attendees will explore, and reveal this year's winners for the, our Awards for Excellence program and our Charlton Scholar winners. Advancement Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network, offering you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. Be a part of our live broadcast by sharing your knowledge. Participate in today's discussion by tweeting us at hashtag higher ed live. I'll throw that up for everybody to see. That's hashtag higher ed live. All of our episodes are free and easy to access in the video archives at higheredlive.com. Or take higher ed live with you on the go by subscribing to our podcasts. Today's episode is made possible by SUNY Quad. SUNY Quad supports advancement professionals throughout the SUNY system, the largest comprehensive system in higher education in the United States with 64 colleges and universities. In the disciplines and SUNY Quad serves to support disciplines in marketing and communications, alumni engagement, development, donor relations, and advancement services. And as always, Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a digital first agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. Many thanks to our friends at M. Stoner. And now that we got that out of the way, let's dive right into the reason we're here to talk about SUNY Quad. And I'd like to thank our two guests here for joining us here today. First of all, we have Tim Neckritz. Tim is the Director of News and Media at SUNY Oswego, leading campus news operations, a range of digital content development, and the college's main social media channels. He's also an award-winning journalist in a previous entry. You look good. you look pretty good, Tim, for that previous entry. I try. Neckritz. Nextwood's regular roles include writer, editor, planner, peacemaker, photographer, marketer, matchmaker, video producer, and recruiter. And if that's not enough, he also serves as the chief editor of Higher Ed Web's Link Journal and teaches a course in media writing at SUNY Oswego. Tim serves on our board of directors for the SUNY Quad Board, and he's also the programming chair. Welcome aboard, Tim. Happy to make it. Next up, we have Ben Wendrow. Wendrow. As the Director of Advancement Services and Donor Relations, Ben oversees advancement communications, stewardship events, and impact messages related to philanthropy that reinforce the importance of charitable giving at SUNY Oneonta. Additionally, Ben supervises the advancement services operations, which include charitable gift processing and daily maintenance of the institution's alumni and donor bases. Ben is a proud graduate of SUNY Oneonta and has spent more than 10 years working in higher education. He too serves on the SUNY Quad Board of Directors and is our Awards for Excellence Chair. Thank you for joining us, Ben. Hey everyone, happy to be here. All right, as we said, don't hesitate to ask questions using the hashtag Higher Ed Live and we'll do our best to get to your questions as they come in. So let's get started back at the conference. Last year, we had a record attendance at this conference with more than 300 people joining us in Syracuse, New York, and we're looking to break that mark this year. Our goal, as we said, is to provide a low-cost, high-value professional development opportunity. SUNY Quad members with, their ent with an early bird registration fee pay only $450 for the conference. So hurry now and register. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, the folks from Graduate, who will be supporting the conference this year. The high value of this educational opportunity comes from a wide array of topical areas and high quality speakers. 
Let's hear more from Tim about that, who, along with his committee, has worked very hard to help curate a great lineup once again this year. Tim, turn it over to you to talk about the presentations and some of the highlights of our general sessions. Well, we were really pleased. We had, I don't think we've ever had more um, people apply to speak this year. We made for some hard decisions, and we actually end up having to get a couple more presentation rooms to accommodate the high value of quality that we had. We're currently sitting at about 46 breakouts. That seems to be fluid for some reason, but um, that'll be happening over the course of six breakout sessions, so about eight per session. It makes for some really hard decisions, uh, but that's why we encourage people to send multiple, represent multiple representatives to the conference. So, oh, you go to this one, you go to this one, and then we'll go back and, and share our knowledge. Um, we have... 18 SUNY institutions represented, um, four-year schools, um, some of the specialty colleges, um, university centers, and a lot of community uh, community colleges because a large part of the SUNY quad uh, membership is community colleges. So we're thrilled that we have people both addressing community colleges and from the community colleges because they'll understand some of the similar challenges that they deal with for having students who for two years instead of four years and how do you run an alumni uh, an alumni program with that. Um, we have we have some presenters from CUNY, which is cool, and a, a lot of private colleges, very distinguished uh, colleges uh, from around the state, around the region, will be presenting and sharing their knowledge as well. So um, while we do have a large number of SUNY representatives, it's really a, there's so many different institutions in New York State that are represented, and so I think you'll hear from people at colleges that are similar to yours, and also see kind of how the other half lives, but also some aspirational stuff, saying, okay, we can't get there this year, we can get here in, in a year or two by planning ahead. Um, the breakouts, uh, development and fundraising is the largest uh, percentage of those breakouts at the moment, um, which normally happens, but we also have really good representation in communications and marketing, alumni relations, social and digital media. Um, and some there's some that are more about um, I guess professional development. There's always we always get some good SUNY sale uh, presentations that are really more about focusing on the person, the individual. And I think as much as there's a lot about technology and tools, a lot of what you're going to find out when going to this conference is really about maximizing what you can do in your time and working with other humans and the importance of teamwork and collaboration, which I know we've all found on our old campus. And it's not the size of your office, it's the size of your team really. So there'll be a lot um, probably focusing on that, whether it's working with alumni or um, your own alumni or volunteers or students. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of great lessons there. Um, you'll see a lot. You'll see some tried and true stuff, some things that will just you know, confirm some of the things you know, some ideas that maybe you don't know if they're going to work, um, but also some emerging topics. I'm very excited about some of the more advanced and the uh, artificial intelligence stuff that's being discussed and more on that in a moment. Um, there'll be some case studies of, you know, what's ha what's worked at colleges similar to yours. And there'll be some focus on creativity as well, which is always good, whether it's the art of creativity itself or creative problem solving, which, let's face it, that's all of our job descriptions, creative problem solving is, is way up on the list. Um, there'll be some digital and some print. You know, we, we still love our print uh, pieces here around SUNY Quad. Um, so uh, we do have some uh, design um, some piece, some things involving design and um, thinking about design and, and different contexts for that. Um, but generally speaking, like I said, it'll be there'll be a lot of things that might be new to people in terms of uh, tools, technology, or things that maybe they're thinking about and haven't used yet. I know we do have a number of, of uh, vendors and sponsors who will be there if people are looking for a solution in that way. Um, but also, like I said, a lot of it comes down to people. SUNY Quad is made of people. Um, and uh, we have, uh, whether it's on the board or the presenters or the attendees, you're going to meet a lot of great people and you're going to learn a lot of good things from those people. And I think when we do our surveys, uh, the networking of it is as important to people as actually learning. I think, um, like Carrie said, about 300 people, more than 300 people in Syracuse, which was an amazing turnout. Saratoga is a wonderful place as well, centrally located, very, very nice town. We've got some great off-site activities going on, so definitely worth uh, considering. Thank you, Tim. That sounds like a robust lineup. And Tim, where can people find out more information about these? Oh, they can go to SUNYQuad.org. Um, hopefully, you can look over Carrie's shoulder if you need to figure out how to spell SUNYQuad. Yes, one word. 
org, um, and then uh, the conference itself. The schedule is still coming together because we are all busy people working at our own SUNY institutions. We've got presenters booked. You can see who the speakers are, and hopefully you'll be as, uh, as excited and impressed as we are as far as who is coming in. Because, like I said, it really spans uh, the various uh, areas within any of our colleges as well as geographically. Thanks, Tim, for that. And as Tim mentioned, yes, a lot of folks want to wait to register till they see the the uh, wide array of uh, right. sessions and want to make sure it's worth their while. And you can take a look there. And as I tell, as Tim has alluded to, and we can attest to, it's a wide array. And it's very diverse offering. So, Tim, could you talk to us a little bit more about the keynote and plenary sessions that we have to look forward to in June? Absolutely. Um, it's going to kick off with with and. And all these, in large part, these sessions are not things we've had before, so we're really excited about it. Um, there's going to be the role of philanthropy and communications in the research today. Great panel. <clears throat> it was inevitable. It was going to happen. Um, and basically, that's being, it's kind of being chaired by Dexter Bailey, the vice president of university advancement at uh, Sony Brook, with a couple of researchers, Ken Dill, who is the Lois, Lewis and Beatrice Laufer Endowed Chair, Director of Laufer Center for Physical and Quantitative Biology, Anyone at Stony Brook, please, it's all my fault. They did, they've supplied me with good stuff, I just can't read. Uh, Robert Harrison, PhD, the founding director of and, and endowed chair of the Institution for Advanced Computational Science. These, they're doing really, really big work. That work would not be would be would not be possible without philanthropy and endowments. And so it's really gonna be a discussion about how philanthropy impacted the notable work of Stony Brook's professors and some of the research they're doing. And it'll address how philanthropy inspired both of these professors to join Stony Brook in the first place, how it's enabled their scientific discoveries and engineering designs, including advanced simulation, modern approaches to artificial intelligence, and, and complex modeling, including drug efficacy. I'll say that three times fast. Um, they'll discuss the interdisciplinary uh, collaboration across campus, including arts and humanities, and the importance of presidential leadership, effective marketing and communications, managing donor expectations, and strategic deployment of university funding because and limited funding because we know everyone's always competing for those dollars in some way. Um, but the TLDR is really how all of us in uh, SUNY Quad um, are part of making this great research possible. Obviously, we're not in this business to raise funds or or to organize events, but really to benefit our students and to benefit the greater world. I think this is an example of that. And that is our opening plenary. Um, the next day, we're going to be hearing, or excuse me, on Wednesday, uh, which is not the next day, um, Kate Johnson, the acting director of the National Racing Museum Hall of, and Hall of Fame, um, is going to be talking about um, very interesting thing as far as their type of racing because their members are two different species. They are horses and jockeys, obviously. Um, and she's going to talk about the marketing, communication, and development channel challenges in running one of the most beautiful and unique museums in Hall of Fame, Halls of Fame. Obviously, the, the talk is going to be great, and the visit's going to be really, really interesting as well. Saratoga and its racing history is something that's been threaded through this conference quite a bit, because you can't go to Saratoga and not touch on some of the, the local color, the local flavor. Um, the opening session on Thursday is one of those I'm looking forward to as well. Karen Fisher, who's a senior reporter for the Chronicle of Higher Education, is going to, call, is going to talk. And she covers the business of international education, the globalization of higher education, including competition for foreign students, activities by American colleges overseas, policies and programs that affect the international activities of American colleges, because obviously we are one world very attached to one another. Something happens one piece of the world, it affects everything else in higher education as well. Um, and basically her topic is called Bridging a Growing Divide. And it's uh, basically the, the gist is this is a country that has dealing with partisan divisions. Um, higher education is facing some public mistrust, the whole question that comes up over and over, is it worth going to college? Is it worth the investment? Obviously, all of us would say yes, but how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you make that case? And also looks at the case of whether this is a new normal or can colleges regain public support because everything is cyclical, um, things ebb and flow. And so are we looking at more questioning of higher education than usual. Is this usual? Um, is this going to be the trend or is it going to reverse at some point? So I think these are all interesting questions as people talk a lot about, well, college isn't the only future, um, but it can get you X, Y, and Z. And so Karen 
we'll be breaking down a lot of that and uh, and interacting with our audience because I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions for her. And all of our questions are very, all of our sessions are very interactive. People always have the ability to ask questions, um, and we're a very friendly group. I think. Um, so, and our speakers are usually really good at working with them. Um, they are we, getting the keynote speakers and all the speakers. We really think about audience a lot. We don't want to bring in people who are not going to be um, very helpful um, and um, and at our level and really trying to understand what our mission is. We try to make that pretty clear um, that you know people are coming in and you know we're talking to a bunch of people working public public colleges and none of us have big budgets and all of us are trying to do more with less and trying to. Um, you know, meet many, many different demands. And so I think it's interesting to get somebody from, um, you know, the highest level of education journalism as an example. Friday sessions, um, I talked a little bit about artificial intelligence. And Rodney Grabowski, who is vice president for advancement at the, of the university at Buffalo, is going to be talking about artificial intelligence and advancement. We all know artificial intelligence is everywhere. The, the uh, you know, the, the Internet of Things, I have this little thing on my hand that, uh, you know, Tells me how much I've stepped, and what my heart race is, and and probably it's also involved in serving the uh, serving the ads on Facebook in some sort of really cryptic way. Um, but how do we make that artificial intelligence work for us as people who are fundraisers and marketers, and uh, people trying to do a better job with uh, with their colleges as far as both marketing it and what's happening on the college campus? Um, and so whether it's shopping, news, or entertainment, we already know that we are we are feeders, we're consumers of that. But implementing artificial intelligence in advancement might seem futuristic, but um, as Rodney is going to say, the future is here. And basically ask the question whether you're going to be an early adopter or a trendsetter. Um, would you rather wait until something's been proven by others, or do you want to be a trendsetter, like the University of Buffalo is, University at Buffalo is? Um, they're using artificial intelligence. Um, we'll talk about some successes and opportunities that they think uh, Rodney in particular thinks is a game changer for advancement. So. It's a little bit out of the box, um, a little bit out of your comfort zone, but really um, it's the type of thing where we want the people in the room to all be thinking about, wow, this can help help my um, job in some way. How do I plug in? Um, you know, is it difficult? Is there a large barrier for entry? So, again, that should be a really, really good session. And then we wrap up with SUNY Farmingdale alumna Carly Ann Fergus. Um, and she is the um, – she is, um, hey, wait, did I do something around here? Um, yes, no, yes. Okay. Anyway, she um, is a director of XRC Labs, which is Retail Tech Accelerator. Um, and she is at the intersection of fashion, technology, and retail. Um, and basically, what does it mean and how does it translate to the work we do in advancement? Obviously, again, you know, talking about high tech, but also high touch as far as, you know, how can we use technology, but also how can we interact with humans and tell stories in a better way? So that's one thing we're looking forward to with her. So there's a lot of great speakers going on. Um, they'll be going throughout those three days, but I know we also have a lot of special events that I believe Carrie's gonna talk a little bit more about. Yes, and since you brought up that Saratoga is so closely connected to racing, you heard about the scheduled general sessions, the plenaries, our keynotes, and you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Thank you, Tim. And Yay. down the... <laughs> I deserve that after that bad horse pun. So yeah, as Tim mentioned, there is... Your voice is horse, and you're good. And it's going downhill quickly, folks. I'm getting muted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on with um, some of the fun stuff that we alluded to, as we are going to be having our Thursday night event at the National Racing Hall of Fame, as I believe Tim touched upon, and that's really going to be a cool space for us to network, um, kind of unwind after the first two days of the conference, and it's going to be a good experience. Downtown Saratoga is wonderful time in the summertime, lots of shops, lots of restaurants, lots of places to network with our folks. And also, we're going to do something interesting on one of the breakfasts. We're not going to have uh, structured roundtables, but we're going to give people the ability to get together with your specific affinity groups so the alumni folks can get together development folks and you can really feel out those niches and kind of talk through some of the challenges and some of the successes you're having so really giving people an opportunity to get that networking and take advantage of not only the sessions but the time face to face with folks so just going to take a quick break here to plug our sponsor and the sponsor is SUNY Quad ourselves again thanks to SUNY Quad for sponsoring higher ed live and 
pushing the conference. We're talking about the pre-conference here today. We have Tim Nekritz and Ben Wendrow joining us as guests. And let's move on. And again, the website, as we said earlier, we'll put a slide up later, but it's SUNYquad.org to register for the conference, to get more information about SUNYquad and to see those sessions that we just talked about. SUNYquad dot org again if you have any questions i'm going to ask tim to maybe check our hashtag at the hashtag higher ed live okay. and see if they're we're all good right now so okay. if not we will move on and another piece of the annual conference includes our awards and recognition and we have two opportunities that we would like to highlight today that exemplify excellence throughout the system and this includes our charlton scholars and our awards for excellence so just a brief history about the Charlton Scholar, the Harry and Barb Charlton Newcomer Scholarship Program offers registration and on-site expenses to the SUNY Quad Conference for a select number of newcomers in SUNY Institutional Advancement Offices. This is our way to help grow the next generation of advancement professionals and give them the ability to grow professionally and build their own networks. So this year's recipients are Give me two seconds to pull up the slide. There we go. Congratulations to Rhiannon DeCuna, the Alumni Engagement Coordinator at SUNY Morrisville. Congrats to Alexis Donnelly, Assistant Director of Stewardship at SUNY Potsdam. Spencer Morgan, Associate Director of Development at Fredonia College Foundation. Karen Wendrow, Digital and Social Media Manager at SUNY Delhi. Taylor Lynch, Assistant Director, Alumni Engagement at SUNY Cortland. And last but not least, Eliza Pianessa, Development Associate, the College at Brockport. Congratulations to all six of our folks. As we said, they will be going to the SUNY Quad Conference, um, paid expenses to beautiful Saratoga, New York, and we're happy to have them on board. I should Next have said, up, where do they win, Carrie? But you know, missed opportunity. Tell them what they win, Tim. Yeah. And next up, I'm going to turn it over to Ben. And Ben, as the chair of our Awards of Excellence program, is going to unveil this year's institutional winners. Ben, over to you. Yeah, hi again, everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the webinar. And uh, as you may know, the SUNY Quad Award for Excellence program rewards the very best efforts of our talented and creative professionals throughout the SUNY system. Uh, the Awards for Excellence are presented annually at the conference, and during the spring semester, juries with professional experience in their um, specific categories went ahead and um, performed our judging and determined the winners. And the judging is hosted and coordinated by colleagues within our SUNY institutions, but also includes uh, colleagues from private institutions or other professional areas um, outside of higher ed, but again, with a tie a strong tie back to the material that they were judging. Um, so this year we actually had a really great turnout. We had 206 submissions this year from 34 different institutions. Uh, so I just quickly wanna thank everyone who participated in this program. And uh, I hope everyone gets an opportunity to join us at the awards luncheon, which is sponsored by Lucian, which I'd like to give a shout out to Lucian for. Um, at this year's conference, uh, and you'll be able to see the best of the best when we present the awards to, um, to all of our winners, which is happening on Thursday afternoon at lunch. So in keeping with the theme of horse racing and the rich history in Saratoga, uh, this year's winners are going to actually receive a framed plaque uh, with a custom jockey silk design, uh, specific with their school colors. Um, and each award category may have had up to three winners uh, win, place, and show, um, tying back to first place, second, and third for a horse race. Uh, the best of category is a win, and place and show were both judges' citations. Um, so today we're not going to be revealing the order or rank of the schools who won, but I will quickly run through which institutions received at least one award, but you should all be on the lookout for an email coming within the next week that's going to um, provide you with a link to the full rundown of category winners. Uh, so without further ado, um, in alphabetical and no other specific order, Binghamton University has five awards. Broome Community College has two awards. Buffalo State College has one award. 
Cornell University Alumni Association has one award, Empire State College one award, Hudson Valley Community College has two awards, Monroe Community College has four awards, Niagara County Community College has one award, Stony Brook University received seven awards, Suffolk County Community College received three awards, SUNY Canton received four awards, SUNY Cortland received two awards, SUNY Delhi received one award, Empire State College received one award, SUNY Fredonia received two awards, Geneseo received two awards, SUNY Morrisville received three awards, New Paltz received seven awards, Oneonta received one award, Plattsburgh received one award, SUNY Ulster received one award, Upstate Medical University received one award, the College at Brockport received two awards, Tompkins Cortland Community College received one award, uh, the big winner, University at Albany received 10 awards, and the University at Buffalo received nine awards. Uh, so again, more details uh, coming soon with regard to the categories and the levels at which everybody won, but congratulations to all. And um, for everyone who submitted, we couldn't have been happier with the turnout. We'll uh, obviously again be hosting the Awards for Excellence next year um, for our 2020 conference. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And we'll also be um, providing a link to share any feedback about the awards program, which is important to us. So if you have any suggestions for how to improve this operation, um, whether it's specific categories or subcategories or the um, functioning, uh, the functions of submitting your uh, awards, just um, any and all information will only make this better. So without um, anything else, I'm going to toss it back to Kerry and thanks again. Thank you very much, Ben, and congratulations to all our winners. As Ben said, keep on the lookout for an email from the SUNY Quad Blast to let you know exactly where you won. But we do appreciate everyone taking the time to submit your great work, and we look forward to honoring everyone at the conference. Ben, Tim, down the stretch we come. Any parting shots for folks about why they should attend SUNY Quad? Ben, Absolutely. you want to go first? Sure, I'll take a stab at it. Well, when I was new to this uh, profession, my supervisor encouraged me to attend the conference. I frankly didn't know much about SUNY Quad at the time. And within a matter of five years, I can say probably a majority of my professional contacts have come as a result of uh, engaging at SUNY conferences and participating uh, on the board now for just shy of one year. Um, it's an equal equal opportunity to learn from the sessions and then also to network professionally with your peers across the SUNY network and even some people outside of SUNY who will be in attendance. So um, that's my biggest plug and personal takeaway. Thank you, Ben, and appreciate all your services with the awards as well. So thanks for that. Tim, how yeah. about you? Again, it comes down to, to humans and I think the great people we have presenting and at the conference, I've learned as much or borrowed ideas from other colleges with their permission normally. Um, because, you know, you can go to a, a big conference. Um, Hyatt Web's a great example. You'll go there and you'll be with people who have teams of 10 communicators and that type of thing or have budgets that are astronomical. Here in SUNY, we might have some different sizes of teams and what, but we're all in the same boat. We all have a lot of commonality. So if someone's doing something, if you work at a comprehensive college, like Oswego and someone like Kerry at Brockport is succeeding in doing something at another similar size college and say, well, this might be something worth trying or vice versa. Um, community colleges as well. You're going to find people who are very similar to what you do and have the resources that you have. And it's always a very sharing group. We, we will, you know, tell people here's something to work at our campus um, and be there. Down the, down the line. I've made so many good friends from here. This has been one of my constants for, God, 15 years, I think. Um, not, not every year, but just developing that and finding people you can learn from. And also, as a person, if you're a person who's been around for a while, um, not that that describes carrier or I, but if you've been around for a while, you know, have and people ask you questions, pay it forward because none of us learn anything. Um, just suddenly, we all learn from other people. So whether you are learning from people or taking that opportunity to let the next generation of SUNY Quad professionals and leaders know a little bit more, I think what's really cool is, yeah, we kind of compete for other, for our students um, with other colleges and that type of thing in some ways. But 
a healthy Sunni is good for everybody. So if we're all doing doing the right things, working together for a better Sunni and a better tomorrow, um, everybody wins. And in this case, uh, Sunni Quad is really where you can see a lot of those wins happen, or the places, or the shows. But again, where where we might be competitive in some ways, but generally speaking, we're all on the same track and we all have the same goal in mind. So. Um, in addition to what you'll learn, just the people you get to spend time with will be really amazing folks. Thank you very much, Tim, and thanks to you for all the work that you did helping to put a wonderful program together for Saratoga 2019. So hats off. Mm -hmm. So as SUNY Quad president, this concludes our pre-conference webinar, and I want to say we have a great, we have a diverse slate of programs fabulous speakers, and many opportunities to network and recharge for the coming year. We hope very much to see you all in Saratoga in June. And as Kerry Gotham, the host for the webinar today, remember to learn more about SUNY Quad, visit SUNYQuad.org to register, see the list of programs, and get all the information that you need. And if you have colleagues who couldn't join us here today or see the webinar, feel free, yeah, excuse me, feel free to send them the link and they can watch it at any time they choose at their leisure. Thanks as always to our program sponsor, SUNY Quad and M Stoner. Again, thank you very much for joining us here today and hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon.